Arethusa is located in the northern region of South Africa, directly adjacent to Kruger National Park. Because Kruger has no fences, animals are free to roam between all adjacent game reserves, public and private. We spent three days at Arethusa and managed to get in six solid game drives. For the morning drives, we're awakened at 5 a.m., leaving us just enough time to brush our teeth, splash some water on our face, and suck down a fast cup of coffee. By 5.30, we were all loaded onto our Toyota Land Cruisers and heading out the gate. Of the three camps we visited, Arethusa was the only one that uses both a tracker and a guide. Trackers sit in special seats located in the front of the vehicle, just above the hood, and affords them maximum visibility. Through the use of simple hand and head gestures, trackers communicate instructions to the guide so as to know where certain animals have been and where they may be heading. Earlier in the day, Jacques was tracking a pack of wild dogs that were on the hunt. The spotting of wild dogs is a very rare occurrence in the Sabi sand. These animals, while similar in appearance to domestic dogs, are very different. Just as is the North American wolf is different from the dogs we know. African wild dogs are a favorite target food for the lion and hyena. But the less than 6,000 animals that still remain have far more to fear from man than any other natural predator. Much to Jacques' surprise, we came across the same pack of dogs he was tracking in the morning. Apparently, they're still in search of food. We tracked these incredible hunters as they moved with seemingly military-style precision for nearly half an hour. Their search pattern began to widen, indicating that they may have spotted something. Sure enough, peering through the bush, we saw what the dogs saw, a small herd of impala. In a flash, the dogs took off in chase. They were so fast that if you blinked, you missed it. Well, about 20 minutes later, we found the pack and they were successful. Tonight, the dogs are gonna sleep with their bellies full. As the sun began to set, the temperatures began to drop. By sunset, it was time to don our jackets once again. Tell me, how long have you been doing this? I've, um, I've been tracking for uh, three, three years and eight months now. Oh, and does it ever get tiring, boring? No. Have you ever yeah. gone out and never seen anything? Yeah, it, 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 we see only in palace. Like, when it's raining here, yeah, we, we see nothing. Oh, so then you're kind of bored or disappointed. 
I'm, yeah, disappointed. <laughs> but most of the time it's wonderful. Yeah, most of the time it's, um, we see good things. Well, good. Yeah. We're having a great time. Thank <laughs> you. This morning was amazing with these uh, wild dogs. Just, it was incredible. It really was. And now today we saw the we saw elephants, we saw giraffes. Um, it, it, it just, it, something, it's hard to explain. But now we're having um, a glass of wine as the sun's going down. And we'll zoom around a little bit more and then head back to the lodge, get freshened up for dinner. But man, they're feeding you all the time. I don't know if I need to eat again. But today has been another amazing day. On our first couple of game drives, it seems every time we spotted anything with four legs, we got totally stoked. It didn't matter what it was. Our heads were spinning back and forth so much, I think we were beginning to suffer from a mild case of whiplash. Our first three days in the bush really opened our eyes to what Africa life is all about. While organized hunting has just about been eliminated, poaching still exists. But thanks to the dedicated service of folks like Jacques and Chris, and their attention to detail, poaching seems to be on the decline. Man and his infernal vehicles are now accepted by the animals as part of the natural environment, so long as they play by the rules. To the animals, a land cruiser filled with people taking pictures poses no threat. But stand up in the vehicle, make loud noises, or worse, get out of the vehicle to get a better picture, and you will most likely wind up the main course for some animal's next meal. Nighttime game drives seem to be a much more intimate experience than those of the early morning. Combine the consummate darkness of a cloudless, moonless night with the light of a billion stars and you have the perfect mixture for tracking wild animals. Our guide slowly maneuvers our vehicle over roads illuminated only by the high intensity light beam aimed by our tracker. It didn't take too long until we came upon a small pride of lions. Their evening quest for food had just begun. Jacques was pointing out to us that Mama was most likely teaching her two young sons the art of hunting. And what seemed even more perplexing was that the lion seemed undeterred by our invasive, high-intensity light. We followed them for some time on their nocturnal quest, and then we learned that food was not the only thing on the minds of these massive predators. The following morning we returned to the spot where we had left our little family in training. It was obvious to all of us that Mama and the kids got first dibs on what looked like a little buffalo calf. Papa stopped by later that morning for a little breakfast and some quiet time. As Fran said earlier, the food seemed to be never ending. Not only was the quality of the food awesome, but so was the atmosphere. Before dinner, there were cocktails at the bar where we reminisced about the day's excitement, only to be followed by some of the most incredible food, all focusing on local game. Since the Arethusa retreat was without barrier fences, an armed guide had to escort us back to our bungalow at night. 
you never know what might be lurking behind the next bush. Now it's time for a good night's sleep because we get to do this all over again tomorrow. What an incredible surprise. We just got finished with our last day of touring and uh, it was time for breakfast. So it's about uh, eight o'clock in the morning right now and all of a sudden they said, hey, surprise, it's a bush breakfast. They went ahead and brought tables, chairs, all of our breakfast, food and coffee, you name it, down here in the middle of the, uh, the plains. So we're gonna have a great bush breakfast before we go ahead and jump on our plane and get the heck out of here. This tastes really good. I don't know if it tastes good because I'm hungry or it tastes good because we're sitting out here. But it is very, really good.